What uh, I wanted to do in this uh, second part of, uh, of these lectures uh, is to uh, add some more uh, tricks and techniques to your bag of tricks. Um, so we are going to do like a replica uh, analysis uh, of this uh, of this problem. So the, the goal is uh, again um, to find the uh, minimum the minimum loss but using a different uh, different set of uh, techniques which eventually will lead to the same result but in a larger you know in a larger um, space on the average uh, minimal loss and i will also mention a couple of problems that we have with this uh, with this uh, derivation so the idea to compute uh, the, the minimum is to set up uh, a stat mac uh, problem with a fictitious uh, temperature so we uh, imagine that we have a parameter beta larger than zero which is uh, the inverse temperature of our problem and we define uh, a function z uh, let's say uh, gibbs boltzmann uh, partition function where vector x leave on, on the sphere of radius uh, n, and we integrate over uh, the uh, Boltzmann weight exponential of minus, minus beta h of x, where h is our uh, loss, uh, loss function. So we, we know, uh, and we are going to redefine um, Mathcal e uh, min as the minimal value of h of x, uh, subject to the constraint that x uh, leaves on the sphere, uh, and this is uh, this minimum we assume that is uh, achieved at some value uh, x min of of the vector of uh, of solution. Now, what is the reason why we uh, introduce this uh, this uh, object? Well, it is because in the limit uh, for for large uh, large beta. Um, we can apply the uh, Laplace method, Laplace approximation method to this, to this integral. And we know that in the limit beta to infinity, this uh, integral will be dominated by, uh, so we will we'll behave as exponential of minus beta evaluated at e min uh, exactly, which gives us a pres prescription to evaluate uh, e min. So, the minimal uh, loss uh, is given by minus the limit uh, beta to infinity of uh, one over beta log of this partition function z. Okay, so this is the uh, recipe for computing uh, the, the minimum of uh, a function of several, uh, several variables. And uh, of course, in, in presence of, of randomness, this is uh, this z is a random is a random function, so we need to compute the suitable statistics of this uh, of this z, or in particular of log log z. This is a random uh, a random object. Okay, so this is a random uh, variable. So what we are going to uh, to study uh, two objects. So the average of uh, imin, which will bring us, uh, which, which will connect us to the previous uh, result that we obtained using RMT uh, techniques. But this, this problem is also uh, very interesting and, and very uh, rich because we are able to estimate also the full distribution of imin, not just its average uh, value, so the full distribution, at least in uh, in a large deviation uh, setting, so for large uh, for large n. Okay, so we are we proceed by um, different, you know, gradual uh, steps. So number one, this is what we are going to discuss uh, now. To compute the average value of e min, of course, we need to compute the average value of log z, where z is this uh, integral. That's uh, already the, uh, the, the, the source of all our uh, problems because we are unable to compute the average of uh, log z uh, directly. Um, so 
In order to compute the average of log z, we uh, use a heuristic uh, method that was developed over the, the years, uh, which is called the so replica uh, trick. So the method is non-rigorous. It, it, it is based on some, on some heuristic. I mean, it is based on, a, on an exact result, but there is a catch. So the idea is that the average of log z can be written as limit uh, n to zero of one over n log of the average of z uh, to the n, okay? The, this, this is an exact, uh, uh, an exact uh, identity. Uh, how you prove it? Well, you expand uh, this for, for small uh, n. Uh, this gives one plus n log z. And then you take the average of this, which becomes one plus n average of log z. And then you have a log of one plus something small. And to first order in little n, this is just the coefficient of, uh, of n, okay? Well, most of you will not need this type of uh, derivation, but it was just to, for uh, completeness, okay? So this is an exact uh, identity. It is called the replica identity because the way we are going to use it is by assuming first that little n is an integer. So when, when you assume that little n is an integer, what you are computing essentially is the average of a product, like a replicated product of your, uh, of your integral here. And, and you know, the, the power of an integral is just a larger integral. And that's, that's the reason why we can, we can compute this type of, uh, of objects. Of course, the mathematical subtleties arise because we, we will need to, to then compute the limit for little n going to zero. So in the vicinity of zero, whereas we will have a result uh, for and that are very far away from zero. They are defined only on the, on the integers, okay? So our hope is that by closing the eyes, everything will, uh, will, will work. And I'm sorry to report, and this is a, a very difficult moment for me, that this will probably not be the case in this, in this situation. So we really need mathematicians, I, I said it, okay? <laughs> Good. So there are a lot of mathematical subtleties uh, concern, uh, concerning this, uh, this trick, but uh, okay, let's, let's proceed as if uh, they did not uh, exist. So we have our object here. So our average of Emin, becomes minus the limit beta to infinity of one over beta. And then we had the average of log z and we use the replica identity to write this as one over n log of the replicated partition function z to the n. That's, that's the formula that we are going to, to use, okay? So now we can proceed for a broader class uh, of uh, uh, loss function. And then specialize it to our own uh, loss function. Um, we imagine that our broader class of uh, loss function uh, can be written in this, in this form. Vk of x squared, obviously restricted to x squared equal to n. So what are the properties that we require of uh, Vk? So the Vks, we assume that are Gaussian distributed, independent. And we have that they are centered. So the expectation of VK is uh, zero. And then they have a peculiar uh, covariance structure. So VK evaluated in XA times V, sorry, VL 
evaluated in X B. This covariance is uh, diagonal and the coefficient is given by the dot product of a xa and xb divided by n. Okay, so in, uh, in, uh, in our case, the, the function f, so in our procrastes problem, the function f is just linear. So it is sigma square plus uh, u, and uh, the derivation is included in the in the handout. It is in equation uh, in equation eighteen. So if you if you replace by v k of x the 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 linear the linear system structure that we started from, you can compute the covariance, and you will you will observe you will prove that the covariance is in this form with a function f that is linear. Okay, but in general we can we can do this uh, this procedure for much larger, much broader class of, of loss functions. Okay, and that's what we. Uh, it is more convenient because we 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 will kill more birds with with one stone. Okay. Good. So what we have to compute now, I mean, so we have our object Z, which is the integral uh, dx over x squared equal to n, exponential of minus beta over two, so minus beta the loss function, uh, but the loss function is written in this generalized form. Okay, so the first, uh, the first thing uh, to do to massage uh, this object before we raise it to the power n is to use the so-called uh, Hubbard uh, Stratonovich identity, which is a fancy name for a Gaussian integral. So you get du exponential minus one half u squared minus i root b u y is equal to square root of two pi exponential of minus beta half y squared. So this, uh, this identity is used every time you have uh, a term raised to the power two in the exponent to lower the power two from two to one. So you have this identity where you have something raised to the power two and you, you rewrite this as something raised to the power one, but the price to pay is that you add one extra integration over the auxiliary variable uh, u, okay? So if you do that, of course, we need to use the hubbard stratonovich identity multiple times, one for each, uh, terms uh, for each component of, of X here. So what we get uh, here is that this will become uh, an integral over a vector U. This vector U will live in on R to the M. We get E to the minus one half uh, U transpose U. So this is the, the quadratic, uh, quadratic version of this object, the multidimensional version of this, uh, this object. And then we have the integral over dx exponential of minus uh, i square root of beta. And then we have the summation k one to M of UK times VK X. Okay, so using this, this trick, we have linearized the dependence on VK in the, in the exponent at the expenses of introducing 
a number of extra integrations over uh, over u. Okay, so now we we have to raise this z to the power little n, and then we need to take the average over the disorder, which is in in v in the v case. Okay, so we need to take the average of z to the n, where we assume that little n is uh, an integer. Okay, so we need to replicate this integral little n uh, times. So we get that this du integral becomes replicated several times. So now we have du with an extra index a, where a goes from one to little n. And we have uh, the constant two pi raised to the power m over two. Then we get exponential of minus one half summation over a from one to little n of ua dot ua. So this is the dot product. So it is essentially ua transpose if you want ua. And then we need to replicate also this v integral, right? So we are replicating this integral and we get, oh, sorry, this one is not, v is x. So we get the product for a from one to little n of d x a. And then we have a product for k from one to m. So I'm, I'm bringing this sum downstairs for, for convenience uh, of, of what? Of the average of exponential minus i root beta summation a from one to n u a component k v k of x a. And this is average over the distribution of, uh, of the Vs. In, uh, in doing this, this step, I of course exploited the fact that the VKs are all independent. So I can move the average from outside to inside, okay? Good, so now we, we have the replicated uh, partition function and we are, uh, the, the next thing to do is to perform the average over the VKs. Um, which where of course we are going to use uh, this, uh, this condition, which I just about to erase, where the, the VKs are independent and Gaussian distributed with, with this particular covariance uh, structure, okay? So yeah, I have no choice, sorry, bye-bye. Okay, so this uh, by this notation, I mean the the kth the kth entry of the replicated vector u a. Okay, this this is the the notation that I'm that I'm using. So what what we need to compute here is the average over the exponential of a Gaussian number, right? Because the v k's are Gaussian, and this is a sum of Gaussian Gaussian variables. Okay. So essentially what we, what we need is to compute the average of exponential of Z where Z is Gaussian with a particular covariance uh, structure. So we are going to use this uh, result that the exponential of uh, Z average over a normal distribution with mean mu and variance the Sigma square is exponential of mu plus Sigma square over two which is a result that I put in equation 12 of the uh, end out also. Okay, so, so what is Z in our case? Z in our case is this uh, exponent here. So it is minus I um, root beta summation over A of U A K 
VK of XA. So what is the, uh, what is the average of Z? Well, the average of Z is minus I root beta summation over A, UA component K, average of BK of XA by linearity. Okay, and this is of course zero because we assume that our VK is uh, uh, mean zero. And what is uh, Z square? Well, then we have minus and minus is plus, I square is minus one. So we get a minus beta. And then we get a uh, summation over A and B, U, A, K, U, B, K. And then we have the average of V, K, X, A, V, K, X, B which is precisely the covariance structure that we assumed uh, from the be beginning, uh, which is diagonal and, uh, and with, with the prefactor that is this function of the, uh, of, the dot, uh, of the dot product, okay? So now we can continue from, from, from here. The result of this average is nothing but exponential. So mu is, zero exponential of sigma square over two, the, the variance of this. Okay. So we get the product K one to M of exponential minus beta over two um, summation A over B, um, U A K U B K, and then we have this function of xa dot xb over n. Okay, I'm using just the sigma square uh, that I've uh, computed there, and there is this factor of two of one half that comes from, from here. Good. Now we can uh, perform the integrals uh, over uh, u, okay? So this term uh, here, so let me just, let me just erase here again. Good, so we have that uh, Z to the N average is the integral over the XA and then we have an integral over U1, UN, each one with a factor of two pi to the M over two. Yes. So this is the X A. And then we have an integral over the U one over two pi to the M over two, the U n over two pi to the m over two. And then we have, we can, uh, we can put together this, this term here in the exponent and this term uh, here to reconstruct essentially a Gaussian integral in little n dimensions, okay? How do we do that? We can just write this as minus one over two, the vector of the u's, So the, the row vector of the, of the U's that multiplies a matrix and all this is multiplied by a column vector of the U's. 
And what is, the, what is this matrix that connects the row vector and the column vector of the use? Well, in, in this term here, this is, this is just a quadratic, uh, a pure quadratic term. So the, the matrix that is in between is just the identity, right? So here we have just the identity uh, matrix in little n dimension. And here we have a, a term that connects uh, components of different type, type A and type B of the vector uh, of the vector uh, U. Okay, so the the object here is beta because there is a minus beta over two of what of f x a dot x b over n. I lost the choke. Do you agree with this, uh, with this rewriting? I'm just rewriting all the terms that depend on, on u in this exponential form, where you have a vector of u, vector of u, and in between, we have a matrix that must have this, this form. It connects the different entries of these two vectors. It is just a just a rewriting of the integral that we that we had. Of course, this rewriting is is very nice because this integral here becomes a, a Gaussian a multivariate Gaussian integral in little n uh, dimensions. Right, so the the result of this multidimensional integral, which is also included in the uh, in the handout, is the determinant of this matrix inverse and raised to the to the power of the size of the vectors. Okay, so the result of this integral is just the determinant of the identity matrix in n dimension plus beta, our function of xA, our covariance function of xA dot xB over n, all raised to the power minus m over two. I am of, of course, no, in this case, the constants are, are fine because I included them in the, in the measures. Any questions about this? Yeah. Sorry, what is the difference between the function f and the loss function? And the loss function, I. That's a that's a great observation. So it is a another quintessentially bad choice of notation because I called f of no. In that case, it's correct, right? So no, no. So the loss function. I mean. This, this, f, this f is the generic uh, function that uh, represents the covariance between the VK, uh, VK values, okay? In, uh, in, for our specific problem, this f of u is sigma square plus uh, u. But we can, we can do the derivation for a, gen, for a generic covariance, covariance formula uh, f. So we are going to specialize this f to this value only at the end of the calculation, okay? Uh, is, is this what, what you were asking? Is... No, no, that's, that's okay, yes. okay. Um, any other, any other question? This, this one, this, this one, yeah, th this one is, is, is a matrix of size little n by, by little n, which is indexed by A and, and B. So th this is a, a matrix and we, we sandwich it between the two vectors, the column vector and the row vector of, of size little n. 
um, I don't I don't know a way of writing it more more clearly than that. So I okay. Next uh, we do a, a change of variables. Because you see, everything uh, everything in here now depends on this peculiar combination, the dot product of uh, vectors of type A and vectors of type B. So replicated different corresponding different replicas. Okay, X X A and X B. Okay, so it is natural to uh, introduce a matrix Q of size little n by little n with entries. QAB, which are one over n xA dot xB. Okay, so this is a, a matrix for which we can say something about the diagonal easily. The diagonal is one over n xA modulus square, but we know that x modulus square must be equal to n because this is a constraint problem on the sphere. So this matrix Q will have one, 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 one on the diagonal. Okay, that's the that's space over which we are, uh, we are integrating. And then we use uh, an identity that I reported on the, uh, uh, on the handout on equation 19. So that's an identity. And uh, the identity is as follows. If you have an integral over vectors x1, xn of a function of the matrix x transpose times x, where is the n times n matrix so x is the matrix whose columns are the vectors x okay that's that's the left hand side of the identity so this is equal to a certain constant that is known explicitly, depends on capital N and little n. Capital N is the size of these vectors. Little n is the number of, of the vectors you are integrating over. Um, this is equal to an integral over a certain domain of matrices Q of I of Q, times the determinant of Q raised to the power N minus N minus one over two in DQ. And uh, the domain D of Q is the matrix matrices that are um, non-negative, non-negative definite of the form such that And of course, uh, the integral uh, runs over uh, the x1 square equal to uh, n. Okay, so essentially this, uh, this theorem uh, establishes the Jacobian of the change of variables that we are that we are after, and this Jacobian is just given uh, by a determinant raised to some power, that some exact power, and there is a prefactor that we can that, that is known exactly. Okay, so this is an identity. It's a, it's a theorem, so we can just uh, apply it to our uh, setting. 
So for getting constants, we have that Z to the N, the replicated partition functions averaged is now equal. That, that's, a, that's precisely the setting that we have, uh, that we have here on, on the left, where we have little n, an integration in little n vectors of size capital N. So that's, that's precisely the left-hand side of the identity. So we can rewrite this object modulo constants that anyway we know as an integration over non-negative definite uh, matrices with uh, ones on the diagonal of a determinant of Q to the power minus N plus one over two. Let me rewrite everything in this form. Exponential minus N over two phi n of q. So all the terms that depends that have a, a capital N in front, I put, I put them uh, here. So including the determinant of q to the power n over two. And this function phi n of q is given by what? Well, you will have a log debt type of term. So you will have minus log that of Q that comes from this term here. Plus alpha, remember that alpha is capital M over N larger than one. And we assume, uh, we assume that we are taking, that we will take the limit N to infinity m to infinity in such a way that m over n is fixed plus alpha log that of identity plus beta let me call this f hat of q so the F hat of Q is essentially the, uh, the, the, the function F evaluated on the, on, the matrix, on the matrix Q, okay? Sorry? Uh, element wise in the sense that uh, the element Q, the element QAB is the one that, that is in the position AB and it, it is determined by this equality. Yeah, so, so e each element of F hat, yeah. Okay, so uh, with the choice, of course, uh, um, F of U sigma square plus U or you know, F or F hat equal to sigma square plus U, then we are back to our initial procrastis uh, problem. But this, uh, this uh, expression is valid in general for, for this type of uh, mm, loss functions that are expressed as sums of, of functions. So you can pick a polynomial, polynomial of higher order, for example, and the derivation would carry over in the same, uh, in the same way. Now, the, the, the next step, of course, of this derivation will be to evaluate this integral, this matrix integral for large n using a saddle point or steepest descent type of uh, argument. So we will be looking for uh, an extremum of this function phi n over a specific set of, a suitable set of uh, matrices, okay? So we will take the limit n to infinity of this capital N to infinity first. And then we will have to take the limit little n to zero, the replica limit. And then we will have to take the li limit beta to infinity. And uh, with all these operations in whatever order suits, are, suits us best, um, forgetting any type of mathematical rigor, um, in the end, we will, we will hopefully land to a, a, to a nice uh, result. Okay, so we have to take three limits, capital N to infinity, little n to zero, beta to infinity. 
Okay. So, well, I think I can uh, stop here with, yeah. Uh, this result is not not exact in in any sense of the word exact uh, and under any choice of the word exact this result will not be exact but uh, i mean we can rename the word we can give a new meaning to the word exact and and that's that's what we are going to explore yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. In in general, I mean, you know, if you follow the, this prescription, in the end, you you get something that that is usually instructive. Uh, but but then, you know, if you want to put it on a on a mathematically rigorous way, that's that's a much harder much harder problem. You, usually this gives a good heuristics on the on the solution that, uh, that then people who do like rigorous stuff would would like to have as a starting because if you know what you need to prove at the beginning of of, of your work it's better than not knowing what you need to prove. Right. So Exactly. So after after you've done this uh, this calculation, then you need to start again with a completely different way and try to prove that this this result is rigorously uh, correct. What 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 is the source of non rigor? Many things. We are interchanging limits freely, so we are taking uh, limits n to infinity, you know, in 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 a different order than than it was initially conceived, and also the fact that the replica identity is is correct as as a calculus identity if you manage to extract the analytic continuation of your z to the n in the vicinity of little n close to zero. But what we are doing is to compute z to the n for little n integer, an integer, one, two, three. So unfortunately, the distance between one and zero is enormous in this, in this type of problems. It, it's really enormous. Uh, yeah. I have a question about the very beginning of the computation. Yeah. I've seen that the partition function that you've written is um, basically a spherical integral. Yes. And uh, the, the integrand is e to the minus beta, a function which is at most quadratic in x, in the vector x. Is that right? Uh, at most, With the loss function of the Procrastus problem. It is quadratic in v of x. Uh, it is quadratic in v, vk of x. Yeah, if you, if you take v to be ax plus b. Oh, in, in our case. In our case, yes. Yes. It, it, yes. Then I guess that the spheric, such spherical integral uh, with the, the, of an exponential that has at most a quadratic stuff at the uh, the exponent can be computed uh, maybe not in, in a different way for sure if you uh, if you convert the spherical constraint into a Gaussian integral that you can do it should give um, an analogous result to what you have without the the, the need to use replicas. Um, Does it uh, work? Uh, so the, um, the thing that I'm not, not very, con uh, I mean, I'm not hundred percent convinced uh, about this uh, this argument is because of the positivity constraint that you have on the uh, a transpose a matrix that appears in when, when you expand the quadratic form. Uh -huh. um, so I think that that. That will get in will get in the way of your of your argument, but uh, we can we can discuss. Okay, uh, I see, I see. So I'm I'm there not a... I'm not hundred percent convinced that you can avoid uh, replicas and do an exact calculation on 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 this. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, we 
No, but I guess when you turn the spherical constraint into a Gaussian integral, then you have minus um, square norm of x, and that should keep everything convergent, um, provided that the Lagrange parameter, the say auxiliary Lagrange parameter that you introduce to enforce the constraint yeah. is bigger and I think the top, like the top value, eigen, or yeah. the smallest eigenvalue, depending yeah. on uh, or or the smaller, yeah, depending on the symmetry that that, that you have. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you you will have a, a minus, uh, and that that might uh, constitute like it, it might truncate the range of your integral. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Which uh, which will create a, a sort of error function type of integral in in a large <laughs> dimension. All right. And that that I think is uh, is uh, is the source of the problem. That, uh, that you, you cannot, um, uh, it, it would not lead to a convergent integral over, over the full, over the, the full, full uh, yes. space. Okay. So you cannot exchange the, the, the integrals over the constraint with the, with the integrals over k, over x. That's, that's, my, that's my intuition. Can I relax now? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>